So today I'm going to talk about creating synths, or more specifically, these kind of plucky instrument sounding things. These sounds you would hear in songs by people like Tennyson, and they're kind of inspired by the sounds you would hear in rumpler based music, which is kind of prevalent in like late 90s video games. I'm going to be using citrus, and there's a lot of citrus specific stuff I'm going to be talking about, but I'm sure there are ways of doing this in other FM synths. I'm just going to copy and paste the MIDI into a new citrus and we're going to start from scratch. So we start off with the sine wave and just by itself it sounds like this. And what we're going to do is change operator 1 to a triangle wave and then put this tension knob up so that it looks more like a sine wave again. But you can hear there's on these added higher harmonics. And we're going to convert this shape to sine harmonics. And this third harmonic here, which is kind of giving it a squarey feel. Like the sound uh, sounds like it's composed of a square wave at the moment. If we turn that off, it um, changes how the sound sounds and it kind of softens it. And we're going to um, randomize the phases so that um, it phases more with itself. And we're going to go into the volume tab and add a volume envelope. Um, turn the sustain all the way down and we're going to create this kind of plucky shape with the decay. Um, I'm going to leave the release up just so shorter notes uh, don't end abruptly. <laughs> Most of this is just personal preference. And then we're going to modul frequency modulate operator 1 by operator 2. And already you can kind of hear that video game kind of sound. And we're going to change the frequency ratio of operator 2 to 3, so it's um, not harmonically similar. Like it's dissonant. Um, you can really use anything, you can even mess around with decimal places. It's completely personal preference. In the original sound, you could kind of hear this music box feel to it, in the higher harmonics especially. That's because the modulation tab on operator 1 has a very, very short envelope. So everything is down all the way except for the decay, which is down like at 2%. And the tension here is um, very pulled down, so we're getting this really plucky kind of shape. And what that's doing is giving this a percussive feel, making the uh, modulation click down this fast makes it sound like this. And then we're going to go into the ring modulation and turn uh, operator 3 all the way up and just change it to 0 0.02. And what Operator 3 is doing is basically just kind of adding this volume LFO to the sound. And then we're going to ring modulate Operator 1 by Operator 4. And we're going to put it all the way up to 20. If we turn the modulation envelope off on uh, Operator 1, you can more clearly hear what Operator 3 and 4 are doing to the sound. So I'll just turn them off. And then with Operator 3. And then with operator 4. Because the modulation tab is basically stopping what these are doing very quickly. But it's all adding to the sound. And so that's kind of the low end of the sound done. And the higher portion is done by a separate oscillator or operator. Operator 5, which we're going to turn up to 8. A lot of these sounds are just built up of things like sine waves and triangle waves, so stuff that doesn't have a lot of harmonic content. And then from that you would like volume automate it and maybe add in some dissonant harmonics to get this kind of natural feeling. It's really up to personal choice like what you want to do with the sound though. But anyway, um, in the oscillator tab 
we're just going to add some other harmonics. It doesn't really matter which ones you add, it's, it's just whatever sounds good. Also, changing the phases on individual harmonics can sometimes sound cool. Much like how we randomize the phases on these harmonics in Operator 1, like we can do that again, and it'll sometimes give a different sound. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really change much. And we're just going to ring modulate Operator 5 um, the same as Operator 1. But as the modulation tab uh, doesn't have an envelope, these are actually fully affecting Operator 5. So when we add these sounds together, it sounds like this. And we can uh, turn the effects output up on both of them and add a ton of reverb to kind of blend the sound together. And add some unison. That's kind of how you can go about making a sound like this. Obviously, you don't have to stick to just using this method. Like, you can change on um, the operators to saw waves or mess around with the pitch or not use the modulation envelopes. Um, it's really a uh, key to experiment to get different sounds. Another thing to note is that you don't have to stick to just any, like, um, synthesis engine. Like, I've been experimenting recently with Wasp, which even though it's really simple, you can get a lot of really cool sounds out of it. So just quickly, I'm going to go through and kind of make something. I'm not really going to talk as I do it, because um, I haven't got a plan for what I'm doing. Um, you can kind of hear it clipping because I'm actually doing this within a song which has a lot on the master chain. But basically all that's happening here is that we've got two sine waves which are turned up 36 semitones, so three octaves. And I, th I think I kind of figured out how the FM works within Wasp. So um, I think oscillator 2 is FM'd by oscillator 1. Um, then you can like add filtering and all this other stuff. But it's really just about experimenting. It's not always that the most complicated synth is going to give you the best result. Like, even just something like Wasp, which is pretty simple, um, can give you something kind of cool and unique. And personally, it's taken me a long time to kind of figure out these sounds, so I hope I've helped other people kind of understand uh, the process behind making these, these kind of things. But again, it's, it's not definitive, it's just how I've come about making these types of sounds. And as always, if anyone has any questions about, like, my own production, or if they want me to make a specific sound from one of my songs, I'm completely fine with doing that. Just message me or comment on this video, but yeah. Also, just for fun, I'm going to play this uh, song with primary sound drivers enabled, which is what I need to have enabled to record audio while I'm capturing. Um, let's see how well my computer handles this. Too many layers.